All right, I'm just gonna have that one up there. Um, yeah, because most people seem to come in. Well, the big group of people is already here. Then more people will come in five or ten minutes after this gets started. So uh, let's get this all nice and ready. My name is Glendon Cameron, for those of you that don't know. And thank you for coming out and sharing your day with me. So, let's see. I'm waiting, waiting, waiting. If this is your first time here, uh, let me give you some of the parameters of how I do the webinars. I'll do the presentation first, and then I'll answer questions. That seems to be a very, very lively part of this webinar series. So, if you have a question about anything that I say, I will go ahead and answer it once I'm finished with the presentation. Now, what happens a lot of the times is the questions just keep coming. And since I start these things early, I'm going to shut them down on time. So if I don't get to your question, it's not that I'm ignoring you. It's just I'm not trying to keep everyone here all day because I did this once and the questions went on for two hours after the webinar. And this was a few years ago and that's like never again. Okay, so it is 357. Let's rock and roll. All right, now this is a different type of webinar. Very, very different. There's a lot of activities, there's a lot of craziness, and it's action driven. This thing is about action. If you're not wanting to do the exercises, then you're wasting your time by being here. If you do the exercises, you'll be successful you'll make money all you have to do is be here every day a little bit before four <laughs> and um, we'll get it rocking and rolling so with that let's jump into it it's gonna sound a little patriotic or a little over the top but i really believe in certain things when i was in the military i was at basic training at fort dix new jersey when i got there i was somewhat of a mess as most of my peers were Around the fourth week to fifth week, we started to really get it, you know, and we were walking through the quad and we were in formation and we were singing cadence and that shit rocked. There was a certain feeling that came over me. There was a certain feeling of pride and accomplishment. I didn't really know how to peg that stuff, but I made a pledge at the MEP station when I joined the army and the accumulation of actually getting to a point where I was good at being a soldier just filled me with pride. So I believe in pledges and I believe in these things. So every day this starts with this. And here we go. I need your word. I pledge to make myself better today than I was yesterday. Yes, say it with me. I don't care who's around. Day by day, I will become the hustler I know I can be. I am all in because I had I am in. And then people like change that, change that. But seriously, take these words to your heart seriously it doesn't matter about anyone else if you start to believe in you you'll be amazed at the folks who also believe in you yesterday we talked about list and how the money's in the list uh, for those of you who were here yesterday you can put in your questions uh, did you start once again if you do the work you will be successful if you do the work so did you make your list and if you didn't make your list, why not? If you was like, well, it was busy. Uh, I'm going to do it later. Well, when I get around to it, those are the same sorry ass excuses you've been telling yourself for years. And that's why you don't have a business. Getting around to it is never a destination. Now, the sooner you get your list together, the sooner you'll start making good coin. It doesn't have to be this major monster list. Obviously, the bigger the list, the better the coin. But you have to start somewhere. My first list from YouTube was 50 people. So understand, you have to get started and you have to stay started. Now, also for those of you who were here yesterday, how long did it take you to make that sale? From day one, there was exercises that was geared and there were people who made sales after the webinar. So once again, people, if you wanna be successful, you have to do the work. I've got my asshole hat on and you know I'm, I'm the teacher I'm the professor and I don't grade on the curve because the curve 
is part of your life. And if I grade on the curve, I'm doing you a terrible disservice and I'm shortchanging you for being here. As this course goes on, and this is day five, we haven't even begun to get hot. It's going to get hot. And let me just restate. If you do the work, you will be successful. Some more of this, and this is something that I really, really am pushing. You, I don't care if you have a job. I don't care unless you just are thirsting how the fourth and you're going to inherit all this money. You need to start a home-based business, even if you have another business. This is how I look at it. The way things are going, the best way that you can take care of yourself and your family is for you to have a business. Because there's in one of my groups, the reseller mastermind group, which I closed on Facebook. There are several people that had jobs and they were doing these side hustles. And there was a few that, you know, they were doing a side hustle one, two years. So when they got the big penis in the sky axe, they were able to actually elevate their income. Because they already had some things in play. When you get laid off and you have nothing in play, it is a panic moment. Been there. It's not fun. It's not pleasant. Now, this is something that I really want you to think about. If you have kids, this is one of the best reasons for you to start a business. Number one, because if you do it right and don't get all weirded out by it, you will also teach your kids how to start a business. They'll see it. And. Um, there's two groups of people who parents were entrepreneurs, the ones who saw all of the uh, drugs, the, the dirty work, the long hours, and those who were very proud of their parents. A lot of times the ones who were very proud of their parents either join the business or start a business. The ones who was like, oh, hell no, I'm not doing that. I'm just giving me a job so I can chill. They usually saw some other stuff, but it's easier than ever now to start a home based business. And remember. Even if you are caking it off nicely, it's better to have more money than you need. And that's a lot of the things that we're going to talk about in this course. Now, I warned people that day five was going to be very, very different. Very, very different. Because if you saw the first video about this course, it's to make you a better person, it's to make you a more confident person, and it's to make you more money. Many people go try to make more money and let other parts of their self disappear. As an entrepreneur, you put so much energy into your business that you can actually become a one trick pony. And that's the reason you have these little internet guys or these wonder kids who make millions before 30 and they're paying prostitutes 500, 2000 or 10,000 a weekend just to hang out with them. They have no social skills, none whatsoever. But they have money and there are women and guys who will help them out with that loneliness for a price. You don't have to do that. Now, let's really get into this. You're writing a love letter. Don't want to hear anything. I've never written a love Don't care. I wrote a love letter. The first time I wrote a love letter, the day before, I never written a love letter. You're going to write a thank you letter. A letter of forgiveness. A hate letter. So let's go over that. You're writing a love letter. A thank you letter, a letter of forgiveness, and a hate letter. Yep. I know it's going to like, now, I know you're like, this is kind of crazy. But once again, this is a very, very crazy course. And uh, I'm designing this and I'm giving you things that I personally did that helped me become a better person and help my business as a byproduct. Yes, this stuff will help your business. And the quest to be a hustler, never forget your humanity. I see many people, I've dealt with a lot of entrepreneurs, and there's some you wouldn't know they're human. You have to like stick a needle in them and pull the DNA out and look, yep, that is a homo sapien. Yeah, that is. Yeah, I didn't know. I didn't know. I couldn't tell by the looking at you and the way you act. So once again, this is action based. I want you to outline your thank you letter now. Oh, if you're new to this, there's a lot of action things that just bam happen. Uh, typically, I would say bring a pen and paper, but most people do stuff on their phones or they'll do stuff uh, on their computer so you can open up Word or Pad and do this. Just think of one person that did a really good favor to you. It doesn't have to be yesterday. It could have been years ago. And there's a lot of people like, well, I didn't say thank you 10 years. It will matter to the person, especially if it's a handwritten letter. I learned this trick years ago. 
Think of a person that did you a really good solid and you didn't thank them or you didn't thank them profusely. Sit down, think of the event, think of what they did and write out a not, you know, like most people do cards to get you a card and it's just like sign their name and blah. That doesn't create warm and fuzzies. If you write five or ten lines saying, hey, you know, Don, when I was going through that event, you were really there for me like no one else has ever been. It's kind of been on my heart and I've never really, really said thank you in an appropriate manner. So I'm taking it upon my time, taking the time today to do that for you now. And, you know, we'd love to hook up with you, take you to lunch, take you to dinner. Just let me know your schedule. And I'll tell you why this is really effective for you. It opens up your generosity center. And when your generosity center is open for others, it's open for you to receive. Many people are closed off. You ever hear people like, I'm not lucky or that happens to other people. They are typically closed off people. Because when you close yourself off emotionally, you close off the good vibes of prosperity, too. It's not like one or the other. So typically, you know, it's five minutes to do that. Just outline it, like I said. And typically uh, I talk while you're doing this, because if I had like some Jeopardy music or something, maybe I'll get some porn music like that. -na 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 -na. That music is playing porn and play that for the next ones. But it's very, very important that you do this because it's going to force you to think about your level of gratitude. And if you're a very ungrateful mofo, that could be one of the reasons you're not as successful as you normally could be. You love something or somebody. Now, the love letter is going to be a little bit easier um, for you because you love somebody. If you're married, write it to your wife or your husband. Uh, Write it to your parents, write it to your kids, write it to your baby. Or you can write a love letter to a product. I'll give you that because some people, what I've discovered, uh, they don't have anybody. They don't have anybody. I mean, there, there's a lot. I discovered that in the storage auction business. There's a lot of people who just don't have anybody. That's very sad, but it's true. So what I want you to do is to think of someone, preferably, but if you don't have anybody, you can write a love letter to your favorite product line or you you could you know if you want to really ball out balling you can do a I love X such X and X product keyword your YouTube video film it and tweet it to the company see what happens now love is power many people think hate is power love is more powerful than hate love will get you much further than hate hate can make a fire of determination burning you but you're running on some very nasty and contaminated food fuel so that's something you should think about now in the quest of building a business and hustling and making money you got to remember to leave room for love in your life because this, this is what happens people get busy and they work hard and before you know it they're successful but they've put so much time and energy into the business that they forget how to connect with other carbon-based life forms. And I want to say they forgot how to connect. I mean, they can go to a party and be the life of the party. They could go to a mall and meet a lot of friends and come out, you know, come out with friends. But when it comes down getting to that really intimate, nitty-gritty level, they're clueless. You know, they can get into relationships really easy, can't keep them going. So by writing this letter, and like I said, if you're not married, you know, you can write it to your parents. They will appreciate it. You can write it to your kid. They will appreciate it. Be ready for some tears. Be ready for some awkwardness because people don't do this. You know, it's that perfunctionary. I love you when they get off the phone. I kind of have um, a thought about that. If you say it every day, every time you get off the phone, do you really mean it? That's just me. You know, some people disagree with me, but um, I just think that when you take the time to sit down and craft a letter to someone you care about, make sure it's hand. All these letters are handwritten. They're all. I don't care if your handwriting looks like chicken. I don't, it, that doesn't matter. Print, damn it. Print. When you take the time to craft a letter 
put it on paper, put it in an envelope and deliver it or mail it to somebody. It can be one of the most impactful things you've ever done for that person because people don't do this stuff. This is how I got business, not writing a love letter, but writing letters. I used to write hand, handwritten love, uh, handwritten letters to my customers as thank yous on very nice stationery with a fountain pen. I got phone calls for some of my thank you letters. It's just like, oh, this is God. We're putting this up on the board. This is so nice. This looks like calligraphy and stuff. Oh, my God. This is just wonderful. Thank you. And uh, just, you know, uh, the guys on the seventh floor, they're moving. I'll go put in a good word for you. Powerful, powerful stuff. So hopefully you saw that you need to be outlining your <laughs> love letter right now. Just think about somebody. Think of um, someone close to you, someone that you know would really appreciate it. It could be anybody. Because see, the thing is, you can write a love letter to your friend, your girlfriend, your guy friend. And guys, don't, don't, don't be like, oh, no, no. This is the reason guys die so early because they keep all this. And it's like, I want I want to pet the kitty. I want to pet. The, but no, it's not manly. And all oh, the cats looking at me. But I, I can't because I'm a man. One of the things about living a life of design and intent is you design your life and you intend to do whatever the fuck you want to do with little regard to what other people think of you. Like, uh, I'll tell you, I love cats and cats love me. Every chick that I've dated with a cat, the cat's like, <laughs> I smell pussy on him. Next thing you know, the cat's there. He's in my lap. She's in my lap. Greets me at the door. Walks me around. It's like, hey, let me show you. Oh, yeah. And under the bed is the handcuffs. She didn't want me to tell you that. But, you know, since we cool like that. So just really just take some time. And when I say outline, you know, person. And you should put an event. The event would be a nice anchor. Just, you know, or it could be random like. Hey, you know, so-and-so was sitting here today and my heart was filled with gratitude. I think you're an awesome friend. And I don't think I've ever said this to you before, but, you know, I really love you because you are an awesome person. You have really in made my life richer for knowing you. Stuff like that goes a long way, a long way. So outline your letter. Because you, you got two more to do. And just to give you, you know, once I go to the next slide, you can just start outlining. Now, this is going to be a hard one. This was a challenging one for me because we were brought up in a culture that thinks that we get power for harnessing grudges. It makes you bitter. It takes years off your life. And it prevents happiness from coming into your life and remember that this is not for them it's for you it's for you and i'm going to tell you why hopefully you can understand this now when you forgive somebody that's done you wrong you're relieving yourself of those seeds of resentment because this is the thing about seeds they typically multiply and let's say you know in the fifth grade pretty ricky he slapped you right slapped you in front of uh jenny jones that girl that you just to this day you love her and you were embarrassed and it's just you know and it, it was an event and it, it was an awful event and it happened like you know 20 30 years ago but you still are stuck back there because you haven't moved on you're stuck and if you go ahead and forgive pretty ricky and forget about jenny you can move on. I have met, and one my partner was really, really good about this. She used to love to study humans, and we she just people would come in to start talking to her. And it was like, yeah, you know, misses his dad, um, misses her mom, just all kinds of stuff. Because people refuse to forgive, refuse. It's just like, I'm gonna hold on to this anchor. All you're doing is hurting yourself. All you're doing is hurting yourself. So. Put in your mind as you're crafting this. And this is a letter that you will give to someone. You will give to them. And if you're not comfortable giving, I'll give you a few passes. You'll write it and you'll call them up and you'll read it to them. This is for you. One of the reasons, like, you know, I'm 47 years old. And a lot of people actually think I'm lying when I say I'm 47. I have learned to meditate and I've learned to not hold on to a lot of stress. 
and I hold on to a lot of anger. You know, I'm human. I get hurt. Things happen. But I've developed a process to release this shit because I want to live to be 100 and something. And if you don't do this, you're not going to make it. It's not going to happen because all that energy that you're using to hold on to those bitter feelings is energy that's being robbed from your life force. Now, once you do this, and it's going to be hard because conventional thinking says, don't forgive them. Just be hard on them. Don't be soft. Keep that grudge going. Keep it. Yeah, yeah. Be hard. Really, who are you being hard on? These people are not even thinking about you. You're being, you being hard on yourself. Now, when you do this correctly, a huge weight will just come off of you. Just huge, 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 huge. You'll feel better. And that space, that place in your heart, that place in your soul that was stuck will move forward. Now, this one's going to be different. This is very, very different. We all have some bitter, angry feelings towards something or someone. Now, this letter, just to be straight, you're not giving it. You're not giving it to anyone. You're going to write it. You're going to get all that anger. I mean, you're just going to, whatever you want to say. I don't care if it's murder. If it's like, I can just kill you. I can just, whatever. There's no hesitation. There's no limits on this. You get all of that anger out everything you just write it down write it down if it takes you like five pages to get it all out then five pages it will be pick the person pick the situation and for some of you you might need to write four or five of these (laughs) you may have six or seven to write i know i had a few i wrote a poem i hate you it's like uh when you left when you came, when you came in my life the air got bitter i mean it was horrible and I didn't give it to the person. I didn't give it to the person. I did show it to other people, and I felt bad about that. But when I wrote it, I felt so much better. Now, once again, you are not giving this letter out. Once you're done, you're going to delete it from your computer screen. You're going to burn it if you wrote it on paper. This is to help move that stuff out of you, to move forward. Now, because the thing is, the thank you is easy the love should be easy hopefully the forgiveness difficult and the hate is easy and i know you're going like um once again outline this letter just you know who when where and it don't show these letters to anyone other than the person that is intended if they choose to share it with other people that's cool but this is for you to power up your personal energy because when you have all these contaminants in your in your your soul, it holds you back. You ever meet someone that was brilliant? Just you know, and you just want how come that person could never really? I guarantee you, if you check their background, there's some of this stuff hanging out in them. This stuff is like it's like trying to fly with a ten thousand pound weight anchored to your ankle. It's, you know, you get so high then. Like that dog that just so stupid they didn't realize there's a, a leash on him and they just and they choke themselves. That's kind of what happens. Now, <laughs> here's the question because I know there's some people, especially if you're like, what the hell? Told you, this uh, is totally different than anything I've ever, ever done. So, now, how does this help you? You know, clearly it helps you become a better person. And yes, I've written all these letters. I'll probably write more in the future. My big question is, do you want to be better? Do you want to be better than you were yesterday? I mean, seriously, do you want to be better? Because one of the reasons that I was able to do well in strange businesses that other people fail miserably is I cleared my personal power. You know, it's like I had a channel where I used to talk about bad dates because you know i was looking for material that would be salacious enough to keep people entertained on youtube and I'll, I'll share with you what happened my life has been really good on that tip for several years several i mean what i was doing was i had to go back in time to pick these crazy events and then i would have to travel back to the present and talk on them what i noticed was even though 
I had forgotten about this stuff and you know I had to go revisit it. When I came back, it came back with me and after I did the video, it still hung out with me for a while. That's one of the reasons I deleted them. I was like, whoa, whoa, whoa. I am going back into the past and I'm bringing bad mojo to my future. And I was like, no, this is not good. This is what I'm talking about, you know, a great book to get. The Power of Your Subconscious Mind by Dr. Joseph E. Murray. Get the book. It's great. And get it on Amazon really, really economically. And I stopped doing it because I was making myself feel bad and resentful for stuff that happened years ago because I was going back and revisiting it. So understand, this will impact your personal power like you will not believe. You have to write each other, each one, because there's people... Uh, when they take the courses, they like to pick, choose, and refuse. Well, I'll do that one. No, no, no. Let me say it again. You do the work, you'll be successful. You do the work, you do these exercises, your life will improve. Your life will get better if you do all of the exercises the way that they're presented to you. This stuff changed my life. When people say that, you know, it's like, yeah, yeah, you know, it's, it's, um, just so cliche and this stuff literally changed my life it really did uh, the letters were free you and I noticed the change because there's a video up on YouTube uh, there was this girl I was madly in love with and it was just like bam love at first sight and all this other stuff for those of you that know I'm a hopeless romantic I know it sounds crazy but it's true and she just totally betrayed me <laughs> so I went to the warehouse and it was two trucks full of stuff and I was in the warehouse just working it out had these big Serwin Vega speakers just blasting all kind of music and I worked and I had grief I was hurt I was messed up and I worked myself through the pain but I didn't let the pain incapacitate me because that's another trick I taught myself when you're going through something find something to do don't just sit there and go whoa Whoa, don't commiserate with yourself. Life has enough shit going on. You don't need to do it to yourself. So about two o'clock, I left and went home. I felt much better. I was still hurt. You know, I wasn't healed in one night. But that direction of the pain into something positive helped our business come up with a new marketing and sales campaign that proved to be very profitable. So you can turn pain to profit if you keep your mind about yourself and don't be consumed by it. Because when you hold on to all this stuff, it will hold you back in life. It will hold you back so much. Uh, that's one of the reasons that I stopped dicking around with the uh, people on YouTube. Because you know, once again, you have to be introspective and look at your behavior. Because at one point, I noticed there was a week that I paid more attention to the people who were hating on me than I paid attention to the people who were showing me love. And I was like, whoa, 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 you're, you're messing up. You're going down the wrong path. So I just immediately... I'm, I'm not going to do any rebuttal videos. I'm not. I just left it alone and moved on, and they all imploded on their own. <laughs> so, you you got to be really, really cognizant of your behavior and how things are impacting you when you are putting yourself out to the world. Because you know, I know when I'm screwing up. Sometimes I won't stop myself because you know, yeah, I was raised right, but acting a fool is fun sometimes. But you can't be consumed by that. But when you become, and I will say meditation helps with this, when you become very aware of yourself, your motivations, your intent, it becomes easier to manage your emotions. It, it, you just get over stuff. Like, I had an event that happened recently that if it happened to me 15, 20 years ago, it would have been a three month to maybe a year long process of dealing with it. I managed to go through the whole process of dealing with it in a matter of weeks because you know, you have to admit it happened. You have to admit that you're hurt. You have to you have to deal with it because if you don't deal with these emotions, they're going to deal with you. And the way they're going to deal with you is not going to be good. Bam, <laughs> we're back. <laughs> yes. Uh, don't think I'm getting soft because we're talking about writing love letters and forgiveness letters. And I hate you. Le no, no, we're, we're, we're getting back to business. So um, for those of you who did your list, great. Congratulations for those of you who did not. I want you to add 50 people to your list tonight. 50. Find them. Friend them on Facebook. Find them. This forces you to do something that's very uncomfortable, which is to go out and talk to people about your business. And 
essentially you just got to find 50 people, put them on your list. And then <laughs> due to some of the other exercises uh, from day one through four, pick one of those businesses and make them an offer first thing in the AM. Now, what this is, is called validation. Uh, I don't want you to spend any money. I don't want you to uh, mock anything up. I don't want no, because if the ideal alone does not woo people into like, hey, I'll spend cash for that. Then it's kind of telling you something. And a lot of people stick with bad ideas way too long. If your ideal or service can make money within 24 hours to the first week. OK, the longer it takes you to get money out of people, either the worse your ideal is or you're not explaining it right or you haven't put it together right. So there's three components why it may not be selling. You see me on YouTube all trying all kinds of stuff. That's when I'm, I'm validating ideas. Like I put something up and people go, yay, I'll keep going. If they go, <laughs> I'm out. I've been through the, uh, I've been through this too many times. So the, the public is telling you something when they go, you know, you get the raspberry. It's, it's not good. There's something wrong with it. And there are people who've invested millions on ideas they didn't validate because they just thought in their mind that it would be oh this would be so awesome this just this would be so awesome yeah, yeah two three million later it wasn't awesome so that's your uh now you've got four letters to write and to create a list now obviously for some of you the letter writing is going to be a challenge so the goal is to get those four letters written and sent out to the person well actually the three because the fourth one you're not giving anyone you're, you're going to burn that get those three letters get the four letters written and the three letters me mailed sent the the nice touch is to handwrite it and put it in on some nice stationery which you can get for cheap at the dollar store and mail it to them people don't get those kind of letters i'm telling you that you'll get a phone call and be like i got your letter ed ed you you're the wind you're the wind beneath my wings today i'm serious you'll get some shit like that and you know what it'll make you feel good it'll make you feel really really good because part of this thing of, of living a life of intent and design you know is happiness and that's one of the big things about with me i don't mess with unhappy people i don't mess with miserable people i have family members i love them but they're miserable and i don't really mess with them and it's not like i hate them it's just their misery could contaminate my happiness and they're not trying to be unmiserable they're trying to like yeah i'm here in misery i ain't moving i'm gonna stay here and if you don't respect that fuck you okay i'm out i mean there are people like you you know you can't tell grown people that they need to change everyone in my opinion needs a personal improvement program everyone myself i'm on one I hopefully you, um, this will help you with yours because every day you can get a little bit better you can become a better person it's very very important so remember 50 people to your list tonight now here's another task like i said this is an action oriented course we're here to get you moving to keep you moving and to keep you doing things to push forward your business ideas definitely got to keep moving now write down your money goal now there's for the week how much money do you want to make for the week for the month for the year for your life how much have you ever asked yourself that question i got this from uh, earl nightingale lead to feel when you ask how much and that's also one of the laws of the 50 laws of hustling that, that the other book i'm working on you got to ask yourself that question. When you ask yourself that question, it forces you to ask yourself another question and another question and another question and another question. And if you give yourself good answers, the chances of you getting these metrics are very good. I mean, how many times have you met someone and you looked at them and there was nothing really remarkable about that person, but they were driving a Ferrari and you got to know them and you're just like, it's really nothing special about this guy that you can see this is the stuff that people can't see writing down these goals and actually saying hmm this is what i want hmm this is what i will give to get it hmm i'm going to put this action plan into play that's how they get there a lot of people think you know being smart 
is the way to get to certain things. And being smart does help. It really does. I'm not going to discount that. What I have noticed is being determined is more important than being smart. Because I know a lot of smart people right now who don't have jobs. I know some smart people who are living well in molester. I know some smart people who don't have two pennies to rub together right now. They're plenty smart. If you sit them down, you'll be like, oh my God, this person is so smart. They know so much. Their head is full of useless information <laughs> that makes them sound smart. That's the deal. You can be what you want to be financially. If you just go ahead and for all the younger folks who are listening, for you, this is great because you start this at 20, 22, 23, 24 but my time you're 30 something you could be out the game if not before now let's talk about wallet goals this is something that i've done for years and they change uh, i pin this 11 18 you know become an exceptional father become an exceptional human being become an exceptional boyfriend uh the Disclaimer there is, I don't know if I'm ever getting married again. You know, I kind of go back and forth, kind of go back and forth. So, but I know I could be an exceptional boyfriend and to become an exceptional businessman. Then $10 million net worth. That's what's in my radar. That's that's what I want. And the thing is with these, this is good to write, put it in your wallet. So every time you go in there and spend some money, you're like, oh, you're looking at that. Or you see the paper. It may not even, because I've got this folded up in three quarters. And every time I go more, I'm like, oh. I, bam, it hits me. It's like, those are my goals. This is what I'm striving for. So create yourself a set of wallet goals. Doesn't have to be a lot of stuff. F five tops, maybe six. And, you know, write it down, put it in your wallet, put it in your purse or whatever coin thing, whatever you have. So every time you go in there, you're looking at it. You, you, it's just staring you there. It's like the old Geico commercial with the money where the money was just always staring at you. And it's just like. It, this just reinforces what you want to do with your stuff, with your life. Just have to be really, really aware of that because goals are super important. They're incredibly important. They will be the difference between, and I should say, let me clarify that. Written goals are super important because you know when you have stuff in your head, it's just kind of in your head. The act of writing a goal down increases the chance of it, of it happening a thousand percent because it forces you to think and it activates those parts of your mind that you're not using. So that's your lesson for the day. Booyah. Whoops. Wait a minute. I actually. <laughs> this was, uh, this was actually an extra slide. That's one. All right. Here we go. Bam. Here we go. I kind of said this. I think that's why I popped out. Uh, but this is real. This is real. Complete the exercises and your life will change. That's the truth. The things that I'm giving you in this course are the things that I've used to change my life, to improve relationships and to be a better person. I will say something that's funny. Uh, people who don't really know me tend to think I'm an asshole because I'm very blunt and I say certain things. But the people in my circle love the shit out of me. And it's amazing the dichotomy that happens because once again, we live in a society where people don't kind of like go under the hood. You know, there are people I met and originally I just couldn't stand them. And I was like, well, I'm going to keep trying. And later on, I just found they were an awesome person. We have that. Bam. First impression. That's who they are. Bam. People don't change. Bam. All that stuff is lies. And it's uh, misinformation put out for the lazy and inept because they don't want to do the hard work of getting to know somebody. Taking time to really push forward, getting to know people, giving people second chances, sometimes third chances, will improve your life in ways you 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 cannot even imagine. Okay, bam. Now we're going to get to the questions. Let's see. Because I know there's always questions. So I'm going to go through this real quick. What's up, Brian? <laughs> James, I made it and I did not get kicked out. A lot of people came early today. Let's see, John Robson, how much snow did you get in uh around here? About five, six inches. What's up, Mark? Snow again. <laughs> That's crazy. James, screw you. It's February and it's 80 degrees in Los Angeles. We don't want to hear that shit. We don't want to hear that shit. Give me a call. <laughs> hey, Brent, you're welcome. 
the snow is keeping me. I'm always inside. I know I'm a trip, Brian. Uh, this is Dina. The, the law of attraction. I'm tapped in big time. Brent, we fly high. Okay. I love Bill Burr. I love him. I love that guy. I, we just vibe. Manny, I did this a little while ago, but I didn't take it serious. I can't talk to my mom anymore because she's in a different country, but this will make a giant difference. I can already feel it. Way to go. It will. It really will. <laughs> David, wow, this is going to be hard indeed. Don't want to open up a communication channel again with this person. Uh, hey, man, no one said being a great person was easy. <laughs> Dina says, hey, amen. David, YouTube is designed for fuckery. You know what? I'm gonna get I'm gonna say I agree with you. It really is. Motivated and dumb beat smart and lazy. Dwayne, true. Uh Richard, thanks for, for to you. I pulled my first 50 leads out of PayPal. I'm signing up for it to get response tonight and will add my first name to the autoresponder. Enjoy your steak dinner. <laughs> okay, thanks. What's up, Aaron? James Snow would be so cool right now. <laughs> That's funny. John Lawyer sneaking in the webcast at work. Hey, that's called double duty, man. John Robinson, what have you done to grow your list? My list has grown by 30 people today. Thank you very much. Greg. G Money, if and when you do a warehouse bid, will you talk about your setup and if you had prices on the stuff and etc.? Actually, that's on my list of things to do. A warehouse, you know, but it's gonna be more than just how to set up. It's gonna be a lot more. Uh Manny, how much is the highest level of Hustler U? I'll stop. You know, I'm gonna close Hustler U probably before the end of the month, and it's 150 bucks a month, or I'm Debating between 700 for lifetime access or a thousand, so that's what's going to be because I'm going to close Hustler U down because I'm going to focus on that and get back to that training. And then, as you know, there's a 30 well, you will know there's a 30 days to 2500 group that's opened up on Facebook. Uh, Jelani, I have my get response account set up and I'm thinking of having the campaign direct to a digital product on Gumroot. That's what I do, man. James, I sold two fat girl pants today. Cha-ching. <laughs> Inside joke. Oh, Byron made it in. I'm telling you, a lot of people showed up early. Uh, Deniqua, I believe. I just wanted to thank you for giving these sessions. I'll sneak and listen to listen to my phone while I work. Another double duty. Uh, this is Chris. I live in an old coal mine town with a poorer economy. I do my best to dwell, dress well, good hygiene, present myself as someone with self-confidence. But some of my friends local seem to view me as more of an asshole business type. How should I handle this? You're, you're going to hate this. Move. <laughs> Move. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to stop there and I'm going to get a little bit deeper into that. You are trying to improve yourself and you're surrounded by people who are not trying to improve themselves. They're going to hate on you. They're going to disrespect you. Even if you start a business and employ some of these people, they will still do the same thing. So you got a choice. You can stay there and assimilate back to the way that they are, or you can move. I know it sounds ugly, but that's kind of the situation you have. This uh, Monia, what are we doing with the list? What type of offer are we sending them? Should this be auto-generated? Part of day one through four was to create a list, uh, create products. So it's a lot to go into in this question since uh, I'm trying to keep this under an hour. I'm going to have to suggest that you join a Facebook group and you can watch the older lessons. Dina, you are the man. I found you while learning just these lessons. I don't know if it's your numbers or what, but all I have to do is think of something. Boom, there you are. Thanks. <laughs> okay, I appreciate it. April Hunter, I'm so glad that you gave the assignment to write these letters, especially the love letter, because I'm finding I'm becoming a zealot for business and nothing else. Being balanced is crucial. It really is. You, it is so easy to just become a business head and do nothing else. And then you look up and you're 70 and there's no one around you. It's very easy. Corey, I finished the 16 hour shift at Fulton County 911. Glad to be on the webinar today. Have you put up the vid from yesterday on hey, in Hustler U? 
And also, can you show the forgiveness slide again? Um, sure. Hold on a second. And yes, it's you should. You've got an invite to the new group. You should. Yeah, you're in there. Yes, yeah, up. This is a real powerful thing. Uh, some people might need to write three or four lessons. It, it is real deep. It's hard. It's hard because you want to hold on to that stuff. This is from Brian. I've heard you make some good book recommendations. Do you publish your book list online? Seems like there would be Amazon money to make there. Um, I haven't really thought that far ahead of it. It's like, you know, I will give you one author's name, Daniel Pink, get everything he writes. I'm just, you know, this is a new thing for me. I'm doing this as a social experiment for myself. So at some point I may do that, but I'll throw out a lot of book recommendations during this. Dina, I talk to you all the time. Lots of new fans. Thank you very much for that. Tracy is 92 in Palm Springs. I don't want to talk to you. This person I want to write for giving this letter has a very delicate medical condition. I truly believe writing this left could hurt his could it hurt his health if I read any suggestions. Wait a minute. The person, how can forgiving them hurt them? Uh, I'm going to say, you know, for you, talk to their doctor. The doctor can't give you, you know, just say, if I write this forgiveness letter, what do you think is going to happen? Just talk to the doctor or nurse on that one. I'm a little clueless because I'm thinking that may actually help them. Percy T, can I rather make a good content to use as an ebook? Not sure I understand that question. The way, yeah, those people in the coal mine town will ask you for jobs for later. They'll still hate you. Uh, this is Isaiah. How would you get an offline people to visit your online sales? You're going to have to become a personal marketing force. You're going to need some collateral material, uh, business cards or something, preferably something memorable to get them to come to your site. You're just going to have to talk about your business to everybody that you meet. James Carpenter. Kids do take note of what you're doing. My seven-year-old daughter came up with a good idea what to do with the clothing that cannot be sold. So, yeah. I mean, you're giving them lessons because they they watch what you do more so than they listen to what you say. Uh, Byron, can I email you get assignments from the last few days? No. <laughs> you have to pay for the other videos. Because let's see. All right. Let, let me just stop here. This is a lot of stuff. And... This is where I'm at. I'm doing this free. I'm going to give you the best information I possibly can. And after this, I shut this down, I'm done with the free stuff. Because after I shut this down, there'll be 30 to 40 emails in my inbox talking about this stuff. And it, it's, it's in my mind, it's very cheap. So either be here or, uh, you know, pay for the group and it'll be worth it. Uh, I'm not <laughs> don't know what that means I'm leaving it alone that sounds weird uh, Brian how did we get invited to the group on on uh, Facebook I, you should be on the email list I sent out the list I'll send it out again in the morning I'm only trying to do one email a day because I already sent out one a day I'll send out another one but I'll put in a link where you can sign up for the group it's a Facebook group which means once you pay then I'll send you an email or an invite from the group and then you can come in it's called 30 days to 2500 bucks. That's the face, new Facebook group. <laughs> okay, uh, a lot of people. I'll send out that email in the morning. Uh, Aaron, what is the future of YouTube in your opinion? I'm, you know, honestly, I don't really know. I think it's bright because the way that they position themselves, but I don't really know because I'm really looking more so as using YouTube as an appliance for me. The overall grand scheme, I'm I'm really uncertain. I mean, they're embedded in American society. They're embedded in international society. But that's a good question. I really don't know. Dwayne, the book is a, list is a good idea. Not so much for the Amazon stuff, but for reading things that reflect the same mindset for those you're trying to learn rethinking. Okay, I'll, I'll, I'll take that under consideration. Point taken. Uh, David, what have you learned so far from the social experiment that surprised you? Has it increased the tribe much? Um, what has surprised me was the response so fast. I figured that, you know, this thing would start to power up around day 20. 
And I'm kind of overwhelmed at the number of people who are getting in. And this is just day five. And I'm still learning. But yeah, that the response to this thing has kind of blown me away. Uh, Jennifer. Glenda, I've really been enjoying this webinar and I'm getting a lot from it. However, I still feel like most of the things you discuss don't fit with the type of businesses that I want to start. You definitely have some good stuff, but I would love to know how to apply these ideas to my business. Uh, okay, well, there's 25 more days and it. Like I said, it's going to get way more intense, way more intense. So just stay tuned. Thanks for joining. Uh, Aaron, what's the best future video category on YouTube in your opinion? This is the problem with that question. Everything is changing. Things that used to be good are struggling now. A lot of the original YouTubers that were making killer bank, they can't make any money now. They're having problems. So this is what I would say to you. Go on YouTube, do some research and figure out what you're good at. Because there's a guy, I can't remember his name, but he's an artist and he just started doing anime on YouTube. I think his name's Mark something. And the channel blew up. I mean, he probably makes about two, three hundred thousand a year from that channel. And he was doing something that no one else was doing. So don't limit yourself like that. Uh, I'll send out the uh, link in the email. Like in the email that comes out this morning, and everybody should be on that list. I will make sure that the links are to the Facebook group. Uh, Leslie Ann. Glennon, I've been doing these letters for years. It can... It can hurt a person that doesn't think they've done anything to be forgiving for. It makes them angry no matter how abrasive they've been to another party. It can stress a heart or something. I'll take that under consideration. I've never had that response. I've never had that response. But um, you make a good point. Chris. Any suggestions on how to connect locally with more like-minded people, business, decent people, peripherally around my age since I'm 26? Go to meetup.com and start a group. Become the facilitator of the people you want to meet and you'll meet them. Looking for them? Eh, you can find some. But when you take the position to start the group, you're going to find more people quicker. Brian. I don't see a problem with more than one email a day if you have something to say. We're watching, following because we believe you got the flavor, man. I'll take that. Uh, that's one of the lessons from business. It's like there's a lot of people that have a problem with that. But um, a lot of people want it. I can send out the Facebook group link tonight. Sure, I can do it. Uh, Dina. Uh, Dina, uh, with all the platforms for resale, I'm finding F being seen, F Facebook the way to go versus eBay and Amazon. What do you think? It depends on what you're selling. It depends on what you're marketing. Uh, Amazon is red hot right now, and there are some people making seven, eight figures on eBay. It really kind of depends on you and what you have to offer. All of the platforms, I do agree, you can make a lot of money on Facebook, but you can make a lot of money on those other sites too. Uh, Leslie Ann, I have a problem being understood, speech problems, but I'm interested in YouTube. Do you think it's still a viable option for me? You're talking to someone who spent six years in special education for a speech impediment. Oh, yeah, I think you. this is what will happen. At first, you'll be nervous and you'll get better and better and better. I would just say make a goal to do a video every day where it's two or three minutes and just work on getting better. This YouTube guy that's making all the money is a guy called Ed Evans. <laughs> I love it. Uh, Isaiah, how do you go about identifying items that you source that cannot find information about online? I am kind of an old school guy. I still pick up the phone and go visit people. Sometimes you'll get more love by showing up in person. Getting what you can get, get getting things done online, getting what you can get done online is awesome. But sometimes getting in your car or even hopping on the plane and talking to someone face to face will make a huge difference. David said, wow, go to meet up and set up your own group. Sounds like its own awesome assignment. All your content is great. I'm probably going to be going down for a consult too. Cool. Uh, Jacob, how does the exercise differ from the ones we did in the Hustler Mindset problem where we had to rescind malice by writing a letter called someone important? They're not different. They're the same exercises, but these folks have never gotten those lessons. Uh, Daniqua, will you be discussing investing in the future, specifically real estate? 
I will, but not in this series. The series is to get you to a point of having a business and making money, but that'll be something in the future with the larger group. Byron, I keep hearing eBay is on the demise. What's your take on this? And once again, it depends on what you sell and how much bullshit you're willing to deal with. You can make a lot of money on eBay. It's just, it's like walking on the minefield. Every day you go to your office, you know, you can get your leg blown off. But it's viable. It's, I will say this. What you put in your mind to do is what you're going to do. Can't wait till we get to the resale businesses. All righty. Let's see. Do we have any more questions? Because it is 451. I am not trying to keep people here all day. Okay. All right. So it's 452. And we'll go to the last slide. Because I was going to get to this. All right, 30 days to 2,500 Facebook group, our recorded sessions, lively banter. It's $29.95 per month or 200 bucks for lifetime access. That should be a no-brainer, but that's what's going on. I will send the link out after I get off of this webinar for everybody that wants to be part. Now, the deal is it's a Facebook group, so you will not automatically be added. I'm going to get your email and be sure to sign up with the email address that you use for your Facebook address. And I will send you an invite from the group and you can get in that way. And this will be in the group later on the night or first thing in the morning, depending on how fast it processes. But I will send that email out because there's a lot of people that want it. Uh, Dina, I live in an area where hustling is the only way. How does one compete? You'd be better than that. All right. I'm going to shut this off. Uh, thanks for everyone that came out. I appreciate your time. I will be back again tomorrow at 4 p.m. And this is Glendon Cameron, and I'll see you on the good side. That's so funny. That was hilarious.